Greetings friends, David Marks here with a quick tutorial on how the crop tool works inside of Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile. Fortunately, there is nothing too complicated to learn in this video, but I do have some neat tricks to share with you. Let me jump over to my iPad and let's get started. Here inside of the Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile app, let's start today's lesson with this image from Portland, Maine. The first thing that I'm going to do is to select this image and then I'll bring it over to Lightroom CC's develop module with a single finger tap. When this panel appears on the right, I'm into the develop module, but right now, Lightroom CC's crop tool is not active. To turn the crop tool on, I need to tap here on this little symbol. Once I activate the crop tool, this panel will reveal all of the crop tool options. Here, I want to use the crop tool to cut away that distracting, little bit of a tree that's creeping into the right corner of my frame. Before I make any changes though, let me point out that right now, this little padlock symbol right here is in the locked position and that the aspect ratio above it says three to two. Like in Lightroom Classic, when the padlock is closed, you are telling the app that you want it to maintain a set ratio as you move the cropping frame in or out. Now, why three to two you ask? Well, in this case, Three by two is the ratio that matches the shape of the rectangles that my DSLR creates. Let me drag one of these handles on the cropping frame in using one finger, and I'll show you what I mean. See, the way that the tool is set up right now, I can crop in tighter and get rid of those distracting leaves, but I can only position the crop overlay in ways that maintain a three by two ratio. If I wanted to use some other ratio, let's say that I want a square image instead, then I need to tap here where it says Aspect and pick an alternative. Hmm. As you can see, in this case, the two objects in my photo, the binoculars and the lighthouse, are not going to fit well inside of a one-to-one -one ratio. So a square crop would be a poor choice with this image. Now, Rather than dragging the cropping frame back out or changing the ratio again, I'm going to double tap on the photo with one finger to reset this tool. So now I need to make a choice. If I think that I'm going to print this image later as a four by six inch print or an eight by 12 or a giant 20 by 30 inch print, then I need to stick with its original three to two ratio when I'm dragging the cropping frame around. But if I'm feeling wild and I don't care about completely filling up a four by six inch or a 20 by 30 inch piece of paper later without doing more work on this image, then I can tap here to unlock the aspect ratio padlock. Once the lock is open, I'm free to drag this tool around any which way and I don't care that the results will not match any traditional printing paper ratio. If you're not worried about filling up a specific size piece of paper later, then free cropping is a fine choice. I'll drag the frame in from the corner using the free crop option in a second. But first, one more trick. It will be much easier to crop off those annoying branches when the photo fills up more of my iPad screen. Fortunately, hiding the interface away here is easy. All that I have to do is to tap with one finger anywhere on my image and then everything but the cropping frame temporarily disappears. Now, I can slide the crop overlay in again by dragging from any of the corner handles using one finger. That looks good, so now I'm gonna tap again with one finger to bring the interface back. Since I'm happy with the way that this image looks now, I'm gonna tap the Done button in the bottom right corner to set this crop. That was easy, but before I move on to our next example, I need to be clear that the crop tool in Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile does not resize your images. This often confuses folks, but cropping here just sets a ratio, like one to one for a square, or two to three for a traditional DSLR shaped rectangle. The actual dimensions that your image will fill, say four by six inches or 20 by 30 inches are controlled elsewhere. In Lightroom, Cropping and resizing for a target output are two separate steps, 
So don't let that confuse you. Anyway, now that you have seen the basics of the crop tool, let me show you some of its other features. This time, we have one of my night shots. I shot this one using a super wide angle lens that was aimed straight up at the sky. Because my camera was pointed straight up, its internal gyroscope got confused about which way this image is supposed to be oriented. So this time, I'm going to tap here again to activate the crop tool. Only this time, instead of cutting away part of this image, I'm just going to tap on this icon right here in the rotate and flip image section to spin this photo around counterclockwise. That looks much better. That's the way that this image is supposed to look. And now no further work is needed with this tool. So I'll tap done to move on to our next example. Okay, one more example. This time, I have an image of an old abandoned Coast Guard station off the coast of Maine. Now, I shot this one from a moving boat during one of my workshops, so the horizon line here is not perfectly level. Since this is an ocean shot, that slanted horizon line looks weird, and I need to fix it with the crop tool. Now, there are two ways that I can try to level out the horizon. The first option is to press and hold one finger here on the compass looking symbol underneath my photo, and then to drag the compass to the right or to the left. Again, I find it easier to do this well when the image appears larger on the screen. So first, I'm gonna single finger tap on the photo to hide the interface away. Now, I can drag that rotation ring to the right or to the left. At about one degree, that horizon line looks pretty good. I'll tap again to bring the interface back. Now, since the aspect ratio matters here, I could tap again to activate the padlock, and then I could refine the crop further at this point. If I was happy, I could hit the Done button now to commit this change, but let me show you an alternative. First though, I'm gonna tap on this little arrow here at the bottom to reset all of the changes that I've made to this image using the crop tool. That reset button, by the way, does the same thing as a double tap. So this time, instead of trying to pivot the image around myself, I'm just going to tap here on the Auto Straighten tool and wait. When I activate this option, Lightroom CC for mobile will look at my image and then it will try to figure out the correct amount of rotation for me. Just to show you what the app did, I'm going to tap on the undo and redo arrows at the top of the screen a few times. Before, after, before, after. I think this looks great. Now, in all honesty, this auto straightening feature is not going to work perfectly for you every time. Sometimes the auto straightening algorithm gets it wrong. But my advice is to give this one a try whenever you need it. And then if the results are not good enough, you can always turn to the manual drag to rotate option. I'm gonna drag the cropping frame in just a little bit to eliminate that small boat along the left edge. Now, I'm happy with the way this photo looks, but before I sign off, let me just demo two more easy buttons in here. First, if I tap on either of these buttons here, then Lightroom CC for mobile will flip my image over. This one flips the image horizontally, and this one flips it vertically. Now, I have no need for this feature on this image, but these flip options can be really useful sometimes. Finally, there is this little button right here next to the aspect ratio padlock. If I tap on this button, then the app will flip the cropping frame from a horizontal to a vertical orientation. With this option, it's easy to crop a vertical shot out of a horizontal original. I'll tap undo here a few times because a vertical composition is not needed on this photo, but remember what this button does when you need it. I think this photo looks great, so I'm gonna hit done. Well, that's it. That was pretty easy stuff, but between the different types of finger taps and the unlabeled buttons, there is more in here than you might expect. I hope that you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.